What's up guys? I'm right in the middle of doing the oil cooler seal job on this OM642 and figured I would film and do a complete time lapse of the reassembly. In my opinion, the reassembly is the perfect time to film this job because all the hard bolts have already been taken out. You already know where all the secret hidden bolts are. Um, and, and that's the, what I'm going to be showing you first off is all of the, uh, the secret hidden bolts um, that are hard to get to or that you don't see so that when someone else attempts this job, they're not going to screw up. They're not going to break anything and they'll know the helpful tips and tricks to get this type of thing done. I'm going to show you guys all the bolt locations for all the things that I found hard to get to when they're off the vehicle because I think that's the best time and the best uh, way to show um, how to get them out. So as far as this turbocharger goes, uh, you have three bolts on either side for each exhaust manifold coming out of the V6. Each one of these are E12 Torx. Um, they take quite a bit of, of strength to get them out of there, so I recommend uh, using an impact wrench or a breaker bar. And you have three E12s on the other side as well. Uh, access for this one is through this EGR pipe right here into there. Um, the EGR bolts right here, these are E10 Torx, and you definitely, definitely, definitely want to take off the ones when removing the turbo that go into the intake manifold. Um, they've not been heat stressed as much, and they're much easier to get out on this side than they are down here. Uh, I stripped both of these, and I swapped them out with hex-headed uh, stainless steel bolts. And the last two bolts, which I had a hard time even finding because they're very, very hard to find, are right down here. This one and the one right down there as well. Uh, both of those are E12 Torx as well, um, and they come out fairly easily because they screw into the bell housing of the transmission or the rear end of the engine block. So uh, that's pretty much it for this. You have three bolts right here. These are the first three you have to remove in order to take off this part right here. Once this comes off, it gives you access to all these manifold bolts as well as these two EGR bolts right here. That's all that's really needed to take off the turbo, except for um, uh, in the center portion of the turbo is this bolt right here and that bolt right there. Those are the two bolts that actually hold the center hub of the turbo onto the engine. It sits onto a pedestal, which you'll see once you get the turbo out of there. That pedestal has four bolts on it that are removed and those are very easy to see, very easy to get to. Facing the front of the engine, this is the left side intake manifold, and this is the right side intake manifold. The EGR gas cooler, this part right here, is bolted on to the right side intake manifold. Um, there's, the bolts for this thing are very easy to get a hold of, very easy to pull out, um, and pretty easy to find. There's only a couple of hidden ones. There's one right here on this thermostat housing right here. This goes all the way through to the head. Um, and then there's also one in the back, far back here, you'll see um, when, when you get to it. And then uh, that's pretty much it for the intake manifolds. Once those bolts are taken out, the intake manifolds basically just drop down. And a trick for getting these out is to take both rails, mo both fuel rails off of the engine in order to pull this out. It comes out in one piece very easily. I flip this right side manifold over to give you guys a good look at what needs to be removed from the EGR portion back here in order to pull this out. You do not need to remove the EGR. You only have to remove the EGR plumbing, this tube right here, the two bolts like here that I talked about earlier on the turbo, those connect to this intake manifold on the back. The only thing that needs to be removed are a couple coolant lines, a couple coolant hoses that are connected one of which is right here that you have to take off. And then you have the option based on what's easiest to get to. There's a connection up here that goes to a tube coming out of the firewall. You can either take this hose clamp off here, which I did, and disconnect this, and then pull this line out with this manifold right here. Or you can disconnect here and here, pull this off, and pull it out that way. I think it's actually easier just to disconnect this connection right here and pull it out that way but whichever way you choose, it's up to you. The last part that I found that had bolts that were uh, pretty hard to find or remove was on this thing right here. This is the, um, the EGR cooler that I showed earlier, plugs right into this and then comes back into this line. This is the main feed to the intake manifolds from the turbocharger, from the uh, intercooler. Uh, rubber hose, 
goes in right here, big old rubber hose comes in here, and then you have your throttle uh, valve right here, and then it comes up and in to the other side, which connects to both your intake manifold connections here and here. And then, as I said, your EGR cooler uh, comes in here. These There's a hidden bolt on top that you're not gonna be able to tell now, but you'll be able to tell when you take it off the vehicle. This bolt right here is hidden in there, and you gotta, you gotta look for it. So you got one here, you got one up here, you got one down there, and then this one does not fasten this part to the head or to the intakes, but if something fastens to it. So you're going to want to remove that bolt as well. Um, on the other side here, you have a flange that comes off of the head this way and bolts up here and then down here. These two bolts need to be removed in order to remove this part. So you can see them right here. This one right here and this one right here. Those are both, I believe, either E10 or E12 sockets, and you gotta get just a little extension on here, hook onto the bolt, pop it off on both of them. I'll go over this once again. So you need to remove this bolt, this bolt, and then these four bolts up here. That one, that one, that one, and that one. And then this thing will pop right off. The rest of the job, it's pretty much up to you to get all the bolts out. This is not a difficult job. It's just pretty time consuming. Um, lots of cleaning involved, uh, lots and lots of bolts to remove, lots of stuff to remove. But all the bolts, um, are, are they're not C's. They're pretty easy to get out and they're all pretty easy to get a hold of. So uh, I'm just going to film. I'm going to do a complete time lapse of the reassembly of this. Um, show you close up on uh, everything that I'm going to be reattaching and show you how it's done. And then uh, it'll maybe give you a little bit of insight into how to disassemble or reassemble. So here we go. <laughs> So I got the oil cooler back in. This is one of those do it while you're in there type of jobs where things that are easier to get to, you might as well just double check and make sure everything's kosher before you move any further. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove all of the glow plugs. Um, it just uses a, uh, a deep well 5 16 or eight millimeter socket to get to them. And I'm going to be using this impact driver. This produces low torque, low repeated torque. It's used to drive in screws and whatnot. And it cannot produce enough torque in order to break the glow plugs. So this is the best thing to use for taking out glow plugs. Um, I've had these glow plugs sitting in a penetrant for the last few hours. Uh, and I'm going to remove all of them and then I'm gonna reinstall them using uh, copper anti-seize. So in case one of these fails in the future, they can be easily removed and you don't have to worry about breakage. I've removed all the glow plugs, cleaned them off with brake clean, and then rubbed anti-seize on them. Um, I rubbed a liberal amount into the threads and then a thin layer of anti-seize around the entire body. Do not get any on the tip. Just like a light bulb, if you get the wrong oils and the wrong chemicals on a light bulb, like for a high beam for a car, it can burn out the element. Same goes for these glow plugs. Any oil on the tip can cause them to prematurely burn out. To clean the intake sealing surfaces, you wanna use a razor blade, carefully rub it across the surface. Do not go side to side. By going forward and backwards, you reduce the risks of cutting into the aluminum. Um, and you're just gonna you know, scrape all the way around, get all of the foreign material off, and then follow up with brake clean or carb clean or lacquer thinner or something of that nature, just to clean it off one more time.
intakes are in. One tip that I can give you guys when putting these intakes back in, and this goes for anything, any manifold or anything along those lines, when retorquing the bolt, go over all of them at least three times. Make sure they're all torqued very evenly and torqued down to spec, and just double check every single one of them. You don't want any of these things to be loose. Earlier in the video, I reconnected this hose right here that connects up into the two lines on the uh, manifold section of the EGR cooler. Um, the, this one connects right here from this line. I put this back on when putting the manifold back on. So all that's left now is to slide this hose clamp back up here and then reconnect this tube in here.
things to look and listen for after the engine is started is uh, look around for any coolant leaks, listen for any coolant leaks, any hissing, look around for any fuel leaks. Um, pay close attention to your injectors at the uh, return lines, make sure those aren't leaking, that none of them have cracked. Um, I do not have the butterfly connected for starting this. Uh, I wanted to, since this is a new turbo core, I wanted to see the, uh, the turbine spinning. I wanted to make sure there wasn't any vibration or anything like that. Everything looks good there. Um, also listen for any knocking, any rattling from the chain, anything like that. It's going to take a lot of cranking, probably a solid two minutes of cranking in order to start it because the fuel system has been opened up and air has been introduced. It takes a while to bleed that air in order to get the engine to fire. Do not crank for more than 20 seconds at a time. A lot of people ignore this on diesels and it's a good way to fry the starter. Crank for 10, 20 seconds, let it sit for a few seconds, crank a little bit more, let it sit, crank a little bit more. That's the proper procedure for bleeding a fuel system using the starter. Also, move your hand when the engine's running back here, move it around in this area and feel for any exhaust leaks all the way around the entire turbo on the rear housing just to make sure that you don't have any exhaust leaks. Everything looks good here, so I'm gonna let the engine warm up a little bit, do an oil change, put the firewalls back on, and we're good to go. A couple tips for removing and reinstalling these firewall panels here. The, they're separated into three separate sections. You have your right side, your left side, and then your center section right here. The center section is by far the hardest piece to get out. And you need to take off this turbo heat shield right here in order to access the center bolt that's all the way back there to get this center part out. The left and the right sections of the firewall are very easy to get out and they're required to take off to get these air boxes out. You have one bolt right here and then one bolt on top. And then on the left side, you have one bolt right there, and then one bolt on the top up here as well. And then both those pieces will pull out. This uh, weather stripping here comes off as well. I've got a couple tips here for the rest of the job as well. Due to the magic of video editing, some of these things looked a lot easier to get on and off than what I actually showed in the video. One piece in particular, the turbo. It takes a lot of finagling back and forth and up and down and forward and backwards in order to get the thing off and on. The second hardest piece to get off is this center piece of firewall here. You have four bolts total, I think actually five. I left one of, one of them out intentionally in case I ever need to take it off again. But you have two on the left hand side there. You have one in the back behind the EGR over here. You have one in the center behind this panel here, behind the turbo. And then you have two underneath here. 
After that, that heat shield portion right there will come out and this entire center section will come out. I don't think it's even possible to get the turbo out without removing that center firewall section. There's no room to move a wrench back there or to even disconnect any of the uh, manifold connections back there without disconnecting this center section right here. It's not a fun job to take out. You're probably going to skin your knuckles a couple times like I did, but uh, it's one of those things that's just got to get done. Overall, this job was not too hard. I've done it once before on an E-Class. This is on an ML. It's, it's just time consuming. It's really not that bad of a job. And if you got a warm barn or a warm garage and you want to you know, crank some tunes while you're doing it, it's not too bad. So like I said earlier, most of the bolts that are required to take off all the pieces that need to come off are easily visible. I covered in the beginning all the hidden or secret bolts that are hard to find in this thing that if left in and you try and pry things off can lead to broken plastic, broken aluminum, whatever. One thing that's not covered in the official documentation of doing this job is taking off the fuel rails. I find it immensely helpful for getting the intakes in and out in order to remove these rails. But that's it. Make sure you do an oil change afterwards and make sure your coolant's topped off and you're good to go. That's it.